Hello, my name's Alex McQueen and I'm an actor. Some of you may have seen me in a film last year called Horrible Histories, the movie, in which I played Sycophantus, who is the um, chief of staff to the evil Emperor Nero. And some of you might have seen me in a TV comedy called Pompidou, in which I play a butler. So yes, that's my background. I'm an actor and I'm going to read to you today from chapter 11 of the ACN's Children's Bible, and it's Jacob and his sons come to Egypt. Two years later, the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, had a dream. He questioned all the wise men and dream interpreters in his land, but none of them were able to interpret the dream. Then the cupbearer remembered Joseph. He said to Pharaoh, there's a young man in prison, an Israelite. He was able to interpret my dream and the baker's. And what he told us happened. The Pharaoh summoned Joseph. He described his dream. Seven healthy fat cows came up out of the Nile. They are followed by seven lean and bony ones who devour them. Again, seven full ripe ears of corn are growing on a single stalk. Then seven empty withered ones come and thrust them aside. Joseph explained to the Pharaoh, During the night, God has shown you what is to come. Seven good years in which the cattle grow fat and the corn in the fields yields abundantly. They will be followed by seven bad years in which no rain falls. The animals will die and the corn will wither. I can give you this advice. Build warehouses and purchase the surplus in the good years. Build up a reserve for the years of famine. The Pharaoh trusted Joseph. He made him his administrator. After seven good harvests came the time when no rain fell. The cattle died of thirst and the crops withered. Then Joseph opened the warehouses Hungry people came from far away to buy grain. Jacob and his sons also had nothing more to eat. So Jacob sent his sons to Egypt. Joseph saw his brothers and recognised them immediately. But they did not recognise him. Joseph put his brothers to the test. He wanted to find out if they would stand up for one another. He ordered his silver cup to be placed in Benjamin's sack. As the brothers were on their way home, Joseph sent his steward after them. He halted them and accused them. Why have you repaid good with evil? Why have you stolen my master's silver cup? The brothers defended themselves. We have stolen nothing. But when Benjamin's sack was searched, the cup was found. The brothers returned together to see Joseph. He said, you others can go. Only the one on whose person the cup was found must stay. Judah answered him. Our father loves his youngest son. He would die of grief if anything were to happen to him. Let me stay in Benjamin's place. Joseph could no longer contain himself. I am Joseph, your brother, he said. You sold me. You intended evil. But God has turned it to good. He allowed me to come to Egypt 
so that I could save you. Return quickly to our father and come with him to Egypt. Here you will suffer no want. Jacob rejoiced deeply when he heard that Joseph was alive. He and his sons and their families moved to Egypt. There they lived in the land of Goshen as shepherds. As long as the famine lasted, Joseph looked after his brothers. So I'm now going to very briefly just reflect on what that fascinating story about Joseph and his brothers really means. And then I'm going to ask six questions which you can think about in your own time and when you come back to read the passage again. So the story covers this man called Joseph who's been very unfairly captured and thrown into jail. And while he's there, he discovers that he has this special gift, this ability to interpret the real meaning of a dream. And he uses that special gift for three different people. The first person is himself. He uses his ability, his special gift, to actually get himself out of jail. He then uses the gift to help the pharaoh, the, the ruler of Egypt, by explaining to the pharaoh that he needs to make wise decisions. He's got to um, prepare when times are good for the moments later in life when times are bad. And then the third person he helps with his gift is his own brothers. So there are three different people that Joseph helps with his special gift. And Joseph also realises that God himself has a very special gift, and that is the ability to make good things happen out of bad things. So the bad thing in this case is the fact that Joseph's jealous brothers sold him into slavery. But the good thing that came out of it is that Joseph was able to make his family safe. And that's one of God's great gifts. It's no matter how bad times can be and no matter how bad things can get, there is always a good outcome. There is always a good end to those things. And that's one of the great gifts that God has and bestows. And we should remember really that each of us has a special gift and God wants us to use those gifts that we have, that he has given us, to help ourselves to help others and to praise God himself. He's really saying each of us has a very special, unique gift, a unique talent. And we should use that not just for ourselves, but for everyone in the world around us, as well as uh, for God's glory itself. And that is what Joseph did. He, he took his special gift, his unique talent of being able to interpret other people's dreams, and he made great things come from that. So that is really the important message in this particular passage. We are all within us given a gift, a talent, that we must use not just for ourselves but for the good of all the, the the people we come into contact with as we go through our lives. So that's going to lead me now to a few questions. The first question is what special gift did Joseph have? Well we've sort of answered that in terms of his ability to interpret dreams 
um, the real meaning of them, and to be very kind and generous in using that gift. The second question is, how would you have explained the meaning of Pharaoh's dream? The third question is, if you were suddenly asked to use the special gift that you have to help somebody else, would you do it? Or would you be too frightened or too shy? The fourth question is, how do you think Joseph felt when he was asked to help the Pharaoh? Do you think he was afraid? Do you think he felt very important? Do you think he felt very glad of the chance to get out of prison? The fifth question, and this is a very interesting one, would you have tested your family or friends before helping them? And the final question, question six, is God gives us all special gifts and special burdens. What special gifts and special burdens has God given to you?